Thank you so much, Jeannie. Hi there, this is Jean with Terabyte Solutions. Um, you know, we are top QuickBooks uh, Pro Advisors and we are also specialized in fishbowl inventory. And although, especially at the enterprise level, uh, QuickBooks has done a lot, introduced a lot of new features and a lot of um, capacity for managing inventory that hasn't been there in the past, there's still a lack in QuickBooks inventory with respect to it having a real world workflow and having and taking account the element of time. Because in QuickBooks, we created we do a build assembly and our parts are instantly out of inventory and our finished good is instantly in inventory, which is not unless you have a very unique manufacturing process, that's not the way it normally works. You normally start a batch and it takes a day or two to finish. And so you're still showing those components there when they're really not there, or you're, you're showing a finished good there when it really isn't. So in Fishbowl, we have a true flow from order to picking, that, and it's with our manufacturing order, and those, those parts are all reserved, and you have pure visibility that they're all reserved, and so we get to the finished good process. The same is true in the pick, pack, and ship process. We have a sales order. We pick our components against the sales order. The documents go to shipping, and they finish the shipment. Okay, and when we have multiple warehouses, enterprise is multi-site. But when I move something, it immediately goes to warehouse A to warehouse B, ignoring any transportation time. So there's also typically in a QuickBooks operation. The front office is sending paperwork out to shipping, and they're marking it up, and it's coming back to the office to add the shipping charges and the tracking numbers and everything else manually. So this, with Fishbowl, all, all functions regarding inventory, order entry, manufacturing, purchasing, transferring, all are in the Fishbowl software. And that, therefore, we can have the people actually doing the transactions, doing the shipping, pulling the parts and, and building the manufacturing orders. We'll be doing those transactions and will be securely away from your QuickBooks file. Okay. Fishbowl is much more demanding than QuickBooks. Fishbowl um, doesn't let you change anything at any time in any way you want, like QuickBooks does. Therefore, it forces more accuracy, it forces more discipline, because fixing a mistake in Fishbowl takes two or three steps, whereas fishing, fixing a mistake in QuickBooks is a right-click, do whatever. So if we, we want that security, we want that accuracy level, okay? And then on the tracking step, in QuickBooks Enterprise Advanced Inventory, we have the ability to track either lot or serial number, but it's a suggestion. It's not a validated lot number, it's not a validated serial number. It will pop up and say, hi, you need to put a, a lot number here, but you can ignore that prompt, and you can put in garbage, it's not an existing lot number. So <clears throat> Enterprise, I would say, truly doesn't cover the, our FDA type requirements, Whereas in fishbowl inventory, we do have much, you know, we do have data validation. The lot number has to exist before I ship it, et cetera, and so on. So overall, we have improved planning with fishbowl. And I think it, all right, this one I'm supposed to minimize this guy <laughs> and come into a fishbowl client and just kind of give you a look and feel of the of the software. You know what, I think we're going to go to Simon instead. Okay. Thank you, Janie. Simon will uh, uh, demonstrate the automating of the shipping and fishbowl. So go ahead, Simon. Uh -huh. <clears throat> 
All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Simon Volta. I'm the Director of Sales here at V Technologies. And let me just show my screen here. <clears throat> um, I'm also on the phone with uh, Caroline Rua, who's our VP of Sales and Marketing. Um, and really what um, Starship is, um, we're really an integrated shipping solution with Fishbowl. Um, we are, uh, we've been around since 1987. Um, Starship has been around since 1989. Uh, we have been working with Fishbowl now for about five plus years um, with the direct integration, and we have about 10,000 customers um, nationwide using our uh, software today. A um, couple things to note at the bottom, you'll notice FedEx and UPS. I mentioned these because they offer subsidy programs to help pay for a Starship solution. Um, so I would highly encourage to inquire with your account representatives from each of those companies um, to learn more about their programs and how they can help potentially pay for a solution like Starship. A couple of the highlights um, that um, Starship offers, um, some of you on the call today might be using our other product called ShipGear, um, but really Starship is its own user interface. It's a multi-carrier, multi-mode platform. Um, it allows you to automate international as well as LTL documentation. Um, we also have the ability to print all of your carrier labels, your bill of ladings, uh, your packing slips um, to both either thermal um, or a laser printer of your choice. We also bring in all your line items, and I'll demonstrate that to you here shortly. Um, basically, pull all your line items from your sales order out of Fishbowl um, and be able to rate shop that as well to choose the most economical carrier for your um, shipment need. Um, and one thing that does come with the um, Starship license today um, is our ability to provide you with an e-notify tool um, that allows you to um, brand it any sort of way you like to. Um, also, you know, uh, have multiple templates in the tool itself uh, for you to be able to provide shipment notification to your customers um, and provide them exactly what was in that um, particular shipment, as well as our dashboard view, so full access to a bunch of different reporting options, um, as well as ability for customer service or sales folks um, to be able to um, uh, trace your packages throughout, regardless of the carrier you're, you're shipping with. Um, I know a few of you also are, are uh, potentially interested in EDI solutions. Starship also does have the ability um, to work with uh, multiple different EDI providers that are out there in creating the XML file, as well as helping create the UCC 128 labels for those EDI transactions um, that are needed. And one other highlight that Starship offers as a Starship user, um, we do offer discounted USPS shipping. Um, I know we're in the holiday season and everyone's looking to um, help save um, on shipment costs um, with the USPS option that we offer. Um, you do see those competitive rates come through and that does come included with the Starship purchase uh, today. <clears throat> this is just a um, list of carriers that we have a direct API with um, so we can connect up to any one of these carriers, um, provide you with the, your contracted rates you have with them. Um, if there's a carrier you don't see on here, I would encourage you to inquire with us. Um, we do have a manual bill of lading option we can help provide that at least allows you to automate the bill of lading to allow the pro number to be put back into Fishbowl uh, for you. So let me just jump out of here and let me get into a quick little uh, demonstration of how we work. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Okay. So I'm going to start um, in Fishbowl um, first and foremost. Um, and I just want to kind of highlight a few of the things. So as you're in Fishbowl um, and you're creating your sales orders, a um, couple of things that we look for and how we kind of map to and kind of translate over into Starship. First and foremost, we can basically pull in um, your ship VO, your carrier uh, field here. So whatever this is set to is what we're um, mapping against in the ship VS section, as well as the carrier service. So if you notice here for UPS, obviously UPS has multiple service levels. Um, any one of these that I were to select, um, I would be able to map to and that will, will come over translated um, accordingly if it's air or ground or say LTL for that matter. One of the advantages of Fishbowl versus QuickBooks um, that we have is the ability to basically allow you to pack your shipment inside of Fishbowl. So as you're packing your shipment and all of your items, and I've created a sales order here to kind of demonstrate this, um, for you. Um, basically, you have your mountain bike along with all of its spare parts. So in my first carton, I only simply am going to ship my mountain bike. In my second carton, I have my four additional items. If I simply wanted to move things up and down um, into different cartons, I can simply move that um, using these arrows here. 
and bringing that you know item into um, this other box. If I didn't, I could leave it as is, move it down again. The main thing to uh, look at here is basically to make sure you have everything saved before you bring it into Starship. <clears throat> so as you have all these items in your cartons, we're going to bring this as a pack shipment um, into Starship, and I'll show you that here in a second. So I'm just going to minimize this, and I'll come back to it on the right back. So this is our UI um, called Starship. We have our order header info here. So if you're using Fishbowl today or about to start using Fishbowl and you're using a barcoded pick ticket or a packing list, you can use a wedge type scanner uh, to basically scan that order number into this field here. If you don't have it uh, barcoded, no problem. You can simply type in that order number or use our lookup window here to locate your specific order you're working with. Um, you also have the ability before I pull in this order to batch process. If you choose the batch process in Starship, um, you could select multiple orders, you could select all, uh, or you could just select one you know, shipment you know, that you're working on and load that document. As I load this document, all of that order header info we just reviewed, the, uh, ship or your ship, the recipient who you're shipping to, your ship via um, coming in UPS ground, we also have the ability to map to third-party um, billing accounts as well. So if you're you know, shipping third-party for UPS or FedEx or another carrier, we also have the ability to map to a specific field inside of Fishbowl to bring that information in automatically as well. Um, so as you see here, all of our shipping information has been pulled in. Um, we also have offer and address validation that allows to basically make sure the street address is correct and then the secondary address validation to verify if it's a commercial versus a residential location to avoid on those address correction fees you might see from the carriers today. Down at the bottom is basically where we show you all of your line items. And if you just noticed, all those line items I just discussed a few minutes ago have all appeared here in my two boxes called a mountain bike box that I've created inside of Starship. So I brought those into those two cartons. Uh, one thing to note here is you want to make sure you're doing all of your packing inside of uh, Fishbowl um, and not inside of Starship because we don't have the ability to uh, modify anything on the reverse um, functionality back into Fishbowl. So anything you pull in will come in this way and then will be processed um, when you ship it um, here in a minute. So when you bring in all these line items here, um, you can see all your line item view here. We basically have all these mappings set to Fishbowl, so bringing all the information over. Um, so your item number, your description, your weights, your values. Um, and then also, too, if this was LTL, we would also have the ability to store your NMFC code as well as your class, as well as your description. So you never have to worry about entering that information manually every single shipment you have. So that's all tied to your item number inside of Fishbowl. One of the other key functionalities we offer is the rate shop. Um, rate shop is going to automatically pull it in via UPS because that's how I imported my order. However, if I want to go out and find out the negotiated rates for all my licensed carriers inside of Starship, I could simply hit shop all. It will go out and it will basically pull in all my negotiated rates I have um, set up. And it will basically show you um, between not only negotiated rate, but also have your delivery time as well. So you can sort on delivery time if you wanted their day quicker versus the cost is being more important. So you do have all that um, set up here for you. So just a minute here, we'll uh, <clears throat> be able to show you that. So you'll notice it's sorted lowest to highest. So if you notice, I pulled in UPS ground, but if I wanted to ship this, say, sure post with UPS, I could do that and save myself a little bit of money. Um, if I wanted to choose, you know, sort on delivery, I could do that as well, and I could basically see all the delivery times of what my quickest delivery methods are. And if I wanted to choose one of these, I don't have to re-import the whole order over again. I could simply click any one of these little purple boxes here, and this will change over to that um, respective service I chose. So if I'm ready to ship and process this order, I can hit simply F5, this icon up top. I would bring in this um, ship and process. This will notify the carrier of the shipment pending. Um, it's also going to be um, printing out what we call our smart label. Our smart label is designed to basically show a packing list as well as the carrier label. So if I just open up Skype a little bit. So you'll notice here, um, my, my windows here, um, a little messed up, but anyway, um, we have our die cut label here. So it's your four by six that you're standard um, probably using today. And then your packing list you'll see here 
um, with all of your items inside that respective box that I showed you before. You can customize this packing list. If you were drop shipping on behalf of a, a trading partner or someone else, you can customize it to make it look like it's coming from someone else, um, or you can use a standard packing list that we offer as well. <clears throat> so with that being said, I'm gonna go back in the fishbowl, kind of show you if I hit refresh, and this is all done live. So you'll notice here on carton one, you'll notice my tracking number that came in, along with the weight for that first carton, along with the cost being put back in here as well. It also puts the tracking at the carton level here as well for your reference, and then same thing on carton two, it'll show your tracking number along with the weight and the respective cost for that second package. Okay. So with that being said, um, I am going to turn it over to Robert to talk a little bit about cloud hosting. Fantastic. Hi, everybody. Thanks for again, Simon, for handing off to me. And welcome, everybody, to our webinar. I'm going to speak to you today about the ability then to integrate all of your most favorite technologies into one platform in the hosted environment. What I'm going to do is kind of describe to you a little bit about some of the reasons why we moved to the cloud, some considerations, and then we'll do a quick few-minute demonstration of what the access actually looks like. So here we go. So typically, why do companies want to move into the cloud? Well, honestly, what we're trying to do is most organizations feel like they need to be able to reduce the amount of effort that they spend on IT infrastructure and all of those wonderful things of the past where they're just so boring, we just want to get rid of them and just everything should just work. So we want to make it so it's fewer things to manage. We want it so that at the end of the day, when it does work and we do expand or we have other issues where we need to grow into the future, it's easy to roll out into other locations, work at home, work on the road. And of course, front and foremost, a lot of times, and I'll show this to you in just a few moments, is security. When we're talking about the fewer things to manage, some of the things that we consider in that are things like our person, personnel and vendors. At the end of the day, we don't have a lot of time to spend managing everybody running around, checking to make sure that they're on the latest updates of their workstation or MacBook or what have you. And we certainly don't want to have to have anyone run around and manage all of the vendors that create their own solution. Here I go to my ERP, what we've tried to do is we work well with Simon and Gene all together and all of the products in between so that everything just works smoothly. By doing that, we've actually lifted off of your shoulders anything to do with the systems and largely anything to do with the infrastructure. It's made easy for you. When you start to hit those growth spurts or the expansion aspects of your business, or you just want to decentralize and you want to go home and have everybody in your workforce just go home. That's possible too. So you're able to actually take your systems on the road wherever you are as you need and expand very easily across a lifestyle type of organization all the way through Fortune 500. Security, probably one of the most overwhelming points of our time is the fact that we are facing security issues on a regular basis. It's unfortunate to hear uh, almost every time that we get onto calls, probably one of every six or seven calls, that somebody's actually been uh, affected by something like a crypto locker. And unfortunately, that either had to pay the ransom or have completely had their operation impaired. What we've done here is we've made that easy as well, because what we're not doing is we're not connecting to your environment so that we actually have a disconnection between your location and ours, so that if something were to go wrong, the primary systems of your ERP, Fishbowl, QuickBooks, and V-Technology, Starship are working just fine. We've created the redundancy, 
and enable privacy. I'm gonna share with you how tangible this is. Oops, wrong direction. You're gonna see a little note here on screen that just came from another provider in the space that actually helps do even something like what we do. And you'll note that it just came to me maybe just a couple weeks ago. And the organization knows it was a cyber attack. And this is an organization that is proactively making sure that things are safe. It's going to happen, but we try to mitigate the risks as much as possible. This helps to be safe. So you might be asking, well, is it really that important for me to be in a cloud? Have I considered it? Why am I considering it? Most of the reasons why we're gonna even consider anything like this is because we need our systems to work extremely well as designed. We wanna make sure that we're spending the money, time, and energy on something that becomes effective. And we're also looking for a unification point where everything is being taken care of for us. When we're talking about performance, we're looking at a well-engineered hosting environment that actually has multiple redundancy and isolated servers for your performance with all of the redundancy just in case something happens. When we're talking about how effective something is from a cost perspective, we wanna make sure that we're looking at not only whether or not it's replacing our IT functionality, but are we lifting away some of the burden onto the provider to help us organize and manage and maintain all of those components so when we need updates and upgrades from terabyte solutions or we need help from Simon and V Technologies for ship gear support, who do we call? How do we get to one point of contact to help us manage all of those other individuals? And again, a complete service. We want fluid conversation, fluid communication at one point of contact. You as a customer then receive all of the needs faster because somebody knows what's going on with your environment. Basically at the end of the day, it becomes a bigger hug. So I'm gonna show you very quickly what it looks like in the cloud and what you're going to look like. All of our customers receive this way of entering into the system with one click and depending on your internet speed your solutions arrive as expected every time every day every minute everything looks native to you everything performs as you're expecting, no surprises. Importing, exporting, printing, connected services, everything that you do on a day-by-day -day basis made available and easy for you, right from one point everywhere in the world. It's that fast, it's that easy. One thing I am gonna suggest though, is I want you to be aware that if you are considering a move away from your servers on site, there's an investment caution I have for everyone. And that caution is that what you're looking at is a replacement investment in the infrastructure. Simply said, your expectation on amazing cost savings honestly may not be there. It may just shift. But what you're looking for in that shift of investment is a higher quality of service that brings together all of the points of operations that are most critical to your business and effectively executed when you need it. And that's how easy it can be to move to the cloud 
through December, we're offering a no setup fee up to three months free hosting for all of our customers. And we welcome you to give us a call or let us know how we can help you. And with that, I'm going to turn this back over to Adrian. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you, Rob. Great presentation. Uh, we do have quite a few questions here, and I'm going to launch a poll while we're announcing the question. So if I could just ask you to take a second to answer this poll, that would be awesome. So are you interested in learning more about any of the following? Fishbowl inventory, Starship shipping automation, and uh, I guess my changes didn't save. I uh, had Cloud ERP on there. So Rob, um, just follow up with um, the registration report. I'm going to send a, um, an email out for the audience uh, so that you can contact Rob. Co Rob's contact uh, information will be on the follow-up email along with the recording. And let's take a look at the questions here while the poll is launched. How much document cu customization is possible in Fishbowl compared to Starship? Thank you, Chris, for that question. And then also there's a second part of this question, but I'm going to go ahead and let um, Simon, do you want to take the first stab as far as customization uh, in Fishbowl compared to Starship or just Starship? Sure. Um, so, Chris, um, basically what we would do there, and it's a good question because there's quite a few uh, times where Fishbowl users will have certain custom fields inside of Fishbowl. Um, so we'll work very close with Jean and her team um, to basically allow us to uh, look at certain customizations. Um, so really my feedback to you would be to get in touch with us. We can do a bit of more discovery of exactly what maybe fields you're looking for inside of Fishbowl. Um, and then we can kind of um, determine from there if it's feasible, you know, for it to happen um, and what the cost might be, if any cost at all, to uh, getting those done for you. And then we have another question here. Uh, when issuing a sales order to be picked in Fishbowl, is there a way to notify the warehouse user, maybe email or prompt in, in Fishbowl in their client session so they know to open the sales order if there aren't always looking if if they aren't always looking for new orders? And Jean, if you want me to repeat that, let me know. But that's for you. She's on mute. Oh, let me unmute you. There you go, Jean. Okay. So when you issue a sales order to picking, it'll show up on your dashboard with the fact that it needs to be picked for shipment. So depending on what kind of hardware infrastructure you're going to give your your warehouse people, we also have um, Fishbowl Go, which is a handheld device. And once that sales order is ready to be picked, that will show up on the to be picked screen in, for the sales order on the handheld. And then also, I wanted to address that customization question too, Jean. If you could uh, talk a little bit about the customization, is it possible in uh, Fishbowl? How much document customization? We have, we have complete document customization. If it's stored in the database anywhere, we can customize it at the custom report. Um, the existing forms that come with Fishbowl have some choices, but usually not, not enough for most people. So then, we have an entire department that does nothing but customize Fishbowl reports and forms. And then a second part of that question is, can Fishbowl only change minor things like custom fields, logo, rather than the entire template layout? Okay, the standard form that comes from Fishbowl, standard inside Fishbowl, has very little in the way of customization allowed because they just didn't design the report to be that uh, flexible. But we as an as independent third party that does Fishbowl support can go through and take that those documents and put anything you want on them. I had a gentleman who ran with four different DBAs. So depending on what people were ordering, we would have a, a, a custom switch where it would say, 
use this logo versus the other logo on, on the invoices and the packing list and what have you. So they, we, we could have the four different logos for the four different companies that they thought they were buying from, even though it was one legal entity. And then we do have another question here. Pull that up. My questions just disappeared. Mm -hmm. Where did they go? I love that when that happens. Pardon me, audience. OK, I'm going to launch another poll real quick. I'm going to close this poll out and launch another poll here. So if you could just take a uh, second to answer this poll while I'm searching for my questions uh, bar. It's totally like my go to webinar questions is just like there, but it's disappeared for some reason. So I'm going to pull it back out. Um, there we go. They, yay. OK, um, let's see. Is there a dashboard feature in Fishbowl for non users to view sales order tracking information easily? And there's a few parts to this question. So I'm going to go ahead and let you address that one, uh, Jean. Okay. How would it be non-user? So there's a second part. Can someone view dashboard data via a web portal from outside the hosted session so they don't need to sign in or be added as a full user? We can pull that information out as an additional charge and have, create a dashboard. And then but it doesn't come. It doesn't come, you know, native to Fishbowl. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, hey, Adrian, it's Simon. Um, one thing that you do get with Starship is a dashboard, um, with, and you'll be able to see your tracking tied to that sales order as well um, in the dashboard under a certain report in there. Perfect. Okay, and then we have a couple additional questions from Michael. Thank you so much, Michael, for your questions. Does Terabyte provide custom reporting in relation to Starship and in general for fi for other fishbowl reporting or company or that a company may need? Okay, so Terabyte pro provides reporting for fishbowl. Um, Star Trek, I mean Starship provides um, reporting for Starship. We don't do any custom Starship reports at this point. OK, perfect. OK, and that was the second part of his question. So you just answered both questions. And mm -hmm. let's see how we're doing on the polls. OK, I see that 65% of the audience has voted on this poll. If you haven't voted, we really appreciate your response. Thank you so much. And I am not seeing. Any more questions? But I did, I was curious. Um, oh, we have another question from Chris. Follow up for dashboard question. The Starship dashboard show that via a web portal. Oh, there's more questions coming in, and that just um, took me to the. Okay, does Starship dashboard show that via a web portal so that you don't need to be using the same session? As Starship. Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> yeah, dashboard is launched on a its own uh, web portal, so it's not <clears throat> in your client session that you're going to be processing shipments under. And then we have a couple more questions here. Uh, thank you, Michael. Is Terabyte a pro advisor? Can they support us with all our Intuit QuickBooks uh, before we potentially move into Fishbowl Starship? Well, I am pleased to, to say I've been named as, nominated as one of the top 100 QuickBooks Pro Advisors in the country for four years running now. And one year I was selected in the top 10 as the uh, head technology integrations Pro Advisor. So you've been at this for quite a long time, it sounds like, Jeannie. Jean, I always like to call you Jeannie. <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, LinkedIn says it's been 16 years. I know I've been with Fishbowl for about five, 10 now. Perfect. Well, you have a great reputation. Um, okay, so I'm going to close out this poll. And I don't see any other questions. So if you did have a question, uh, we'll go ahead and take a, a minute to see if we get any more questions. If not, I uh, just wish everybody a happy holiday. Uh, I know it's a busy time of the year, and we so appreciate you joining us today. And um, I'm going to go ahead and let our panelists – oh, we have another question from Patrick. And this question is for you, Simon. Is Starship installed locally? Yeah, it's an on-prem solution, so it will be installed locally. Um, you'll have a server and client relationship there. But of course, we're suggesting that maybe you want to host it all. Yeah, and that's my other thing. You can host it with Robert's solution as well, so it's another option. And then um, could you provide the best contact numbers to reach for uh, Simon? Can you go ahead and announce your contact information? Sure. Mine is, um, you can reach me at 800-462-4016, extension 216. Um, or you can reach me by email at svolta, V as in Victor, O-L-T-A, at vtechnologies.com. And how about you, Jean? Um, it's Jean. Oh, let's just make this easy. Why don't we just say info at T-A-R-A-B-Y-T-E dot com. And our number is 949 Six four five one zero one nine, and my extension is three zero three. And Robert, how about yours? Hey there, it's sales at go to my erp dot com, and the phone number is eight seven seven eight 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 five five two five, and the sales extension is sales extension number two. And it looks like I missed a question from Chris. Sorry about that, Chris. We did have another question. What versions of, of QuickBooks can Fishbowl work with? And then there's a second part to that. So uh, Pro, Premier, Enterprise, and QBO, QuickBooks Online. And then the Starship only work with QuickBooks Online and Enterprise, not Pro or Premier? That is correct. And then it just to remind Starship you, works with Fishbowl because in the flow here is the orders in Fishbowl, then we pass we pick and pack it, and then it gets it's passed out to Starship and the information comes back to Fishbowl. So it won't matter what your version of QuickBooks is, because that's it, it that's at the back end. That's after you're already done. So that means that there's really no limitation if somebody's on QuickBooks online and goes to Fishbowl with QuickBooks Online because most of the, the core is handled in Fishbowl? All the core is handled in Fishbowl. Yeah, Starship won't be working with QuickBooks at that point. It'll only work with Fishbowl. Yeah. <clears throat> and then so, just but, you know, in, Oh, go ahead, Jean. I was just saying, in a Fishbowl QuickBooks world, you know, QuickBooks only manages the general ledger, open AR, open AP. All the heavy list, lifting, all of your operations are fishbowl. And then just to remind everybody, uh, I am sending out the contact information via email, so keep an eye out for that. And that's going to come from Simon Volta over at V Technology. So if you could whitelist his email address just to make sure that all that information comes back to you via email, that would be great. Um, does go to my ERP work with the True Commerce integration tool so EDI orders can go connect into Fishbowl, QuickBooks, Starship? The answer is absolutely. I love those one word answers. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, integra the integration the integration is actually extremely smooth. 
And one of the reasons why, as a provider in the hosting space, we're actually able to care for all of these complex components within the same environment at the same time. And I'm not seeing any other questions, except I see a lot of thank yous and great job. And thank you again, everybody, for spending this time with us. And uh, Simon, and, or actually, Jean, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let you offer some closing comments about Fishbowl and your practice over there. We are a full-service Fishbowl support firm. We also support QuickBooks. And we are Intuit resellers, and we'd love to place an order for you. That makes you smile, huh? <laughs> yeah, there was a smile there. <laughs> and then how about you, Simon? Did you um, offer closing remarks? Well, I just appreciate everyone joining today and allowing us a few minutes to kind of talk about our products. Um, and we hope, you know, we can uh, speak with you very soon. Um, and please get in touch with us uh, so we can kind of learn more about your business and see if we can help automate the workflow uh, between Fishbowl and go to my ERP. Um, and that way, you know, we can make you more efficient as we head into the new year. And Robert, I'll go ahead and let you comment as well. Oh, thank you very much. And again, thanks everyone for this time today. Yeah, you know, bring it to us, try it out. Let us see what we can do to help you actually run all of these wonderful applications more effectively for you and take care of you the best way possible. And have a wonderful new year. Oh, per well, we do have two more questions. If you guys could just hang out for a second. We just got them in. Is there any advantage to using QuickBooks Desktop instead of QuickBooks Online if you use Fishbowl and Starship? And Gene, I'm going to go ahead and let you address that one. That's, okay. Fishbowl will post to QuickBooks Online. QuickBooks Online still lacks a lot of features that you would want to have, like there's no field for a sales rep for them to post to. I know firsthand from being, you know, frequently visiting Fishbowl that the support team cringes every time someone says they're on QBO, QuickBooks Online. Um, it's just not as robust a platform as desktop is. And if you're using desktop with on go to my ERP, you've got the best of both worlds. You've got that flexibility where you can you, you know, access your data anytime, anywhere but you also have the features and the reporting engines and everything that come with QuickBooks Desktop. Perfect. Well said, everybody. And we got another thank you. So uh, many thank you. So we just appreciate you uh, again uh, to take interest in this topic. And you've got the experts on the call with you. So um, I'm going to go ahead and let them follow up with all of you guys who registered. We will be sending out the recording. It will be available at on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash shipping hyphen software. And everybody have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Adrian. My Thank pleasure. You. Take care. Bye. Bye.